Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of BLS Ground Crew. This information provided in this podcast is not the opinion of my employer. It is also not medical direction or medical protocol or medical advice. Please don't treat it as such. The information in this podcast should be used for educational purposes only. If you have any questions, please consult your own medical direction and protocols. Hey everybody, how's it going? We're going to get started today. This is going to be episode number five, start triage. And we're going to get started talking about start triage in BLS. So the word triage comes from, I think, a French word meaning to sort. The goal of triage is to separate and sort patients by their care and transport requirements. Quick effective triage can help us minimize the impacts of MCIs on the EMS system in which it resides. So START triage was created in 1983 by the Newport Beach Fire and Hogue Hospital in California. The goal of START triage is to quickly determine the survivability factors over time. It's currently the most common triage system used in the United States. So there's different zones or classifications for patients. They are one, which is black, two, red, three, yellow, and four, green. What these mean is black is expectant. This means that this patient is likely not going to survive this incident. Given any amount of resources, they're likely not going to survive. Red patients are immediate. This means that they will survive if the appropriate resources are allocated to them and they are transported within a reasonable amount of time. Yellow is delayed. These are patients whose injuries are likely not going to become immediately life-threatening for a decent amount of time, meaning we have a little bit of time to prepare them for transport. Green is minor, and these minor patients may or may not need to receive care um, if the, the definition for green is that they can walk and then they are further triaged after they walk. So they may or may not have injuries that require them to be transported to the hospital. Black patients, uh, black expectant patients are tagged black because they are likely to uh, are unlikely to survive the incident given the number of given any number of providers and injuries pain relief and making them comfortable is likely the best that we can do for these patients red patients expectant these patients can be helped they can be saved but we need to move quickly to get them moved to a higher level of care It's best said, quote, they require medical attention within minutes for survival, unquote. These patients have a compromise to the ABCs shown by either trouble breathing, delayed cap refill or absent radial pulse and or altered mental status. Yellow delayed patients. Transport and care for these patients can be delayed due to the prior priority of care of other patients. This doesn't mean they don't have life-threatening injuries, but those life-threatening injuries will likely not kill them as quickly as the red patients. These patients can be thought of as having hours for care. Green minor patients likely have minor injuries in reference to other patients. Their status would often deteriorate over days, not hours or minutes and they are often referred to as the walking wounded. Unwounded patients may be able to be a source of help for medical personnel on scene. So how do we determine this level of care required? How do we triage these patients? So let's get started in in START and decide if a patient is likely to survive and the amount of time they are likely to survive for without intervention. So the first thing that we consider in START triage is, can this patient walk? If patients can walk, this likely means that they are doing well in other areas of their health, their systemic outlook. These patients that can walk are automatically sorted onto the green TARP. 
they're placed on the green tarp by walking themselves there for secondary triage. The next factor we're going to look at for patients who can't walk is breathing. Is my patient breathing? If my patient is not breathing, we will reposition the airway using a jaw thrust maneuver if suspected trauma or head tilt chin lift if no suspected trauma. If they still can't breathe, then these patients are sorted into black. If repositioning the airway does cause the patient to breathe, they are red. If the patient is breathing, we continue on to the next step. If the patient was breathing to begin with, we continue on to the next step. Is my patient breathing adequately? If the patient's respirations are greater than 30, the patient is red. If the patient's breathing is less than 30, we move to the next step. Perfusion. If a radial pulse is absent or cap refill is greater than two seconds, the patient is red. This indicates likely hemorrhaging or hypoperfusion. If the previous criteria is not met, then we continue on to the next step. Mental status. If our patient obeys commands, so at this point our patient is breathing and was breathing to begin with, they have quality perfusions, meaning they're not in they're not in shock uh, or not in a profound shock and they're obeying commands, meaning they do not have an altered mental status, but they can't walk. This patient gets yellow. If our patient does not obey commands, they have an altered mental status and they are triaged as red. Hopefully this pretty quick podcast can help you to understand what we're looking for when we triage patients and how the triage process works. Patients who are red will need a large amount of interventions and they'll be uh, transported quickly and first. These patients have minutes before they will succumb to intervention, uh, succumb to death without interventions. And it's critical to get them get them the interventions that they require. Our yellow patients have hours, likely hours, to survive uh, without intervention, and they'll be transported second. Green patients may or may not be transported, and patients who get the black tag are expectant. We expect them to become deceased rapidly and the amount of interventions that we have available to us given the MCI, given the amount of personnel on scene, likely wouldn't wouldn't save them. So those patients, we just give level of comfort care as best we can, understanding that they likely will not make it. The definition of an MCI is an incident which overwhelms the capacities of the EMS system, which it's involved. If you're in rural EMS, like I am, it wouldn't take much. We would need a car accident with six patients who all need transport to overwhelm the local EMS system here. And it's important to understand that while we might, you know, while we should initiate triage protocols, the situation will kind of deem, you know, are we, are we actually tagging patients or are we just, you know, just giving them a, an elastic band with the color that they are on it? Um, it's important. The, the tagging system is important because that when we have that many patients, it's going to be difficult for us to keep the medical charts and the medical care reports with the patient and the medical tags kind of serve to help with that. They serve to um, keep the documentation with the patient. It's important that we understand we're not going to treat these triage patients like we would treat other patients. We're, you know, going to do a lot less, a lot less, not none, but a lot less vital taking, a lot less, you know, secondary assessments and medical history 
documentation. If we can get them from patients who are critical, then we should ask them if they have allergies to medications because it's likely with a red patient that they may become unconscious later on. Um, we may transport more than one patient at a time, depending, right? If we have a green patient who can walk themselves to the ambulance, an extra seat in the ambulance, and a red patient who's already in the ambulance, it might not be a bad idea to start transporting green patients with red patients, green patients who require transport, or yellow patients who we can get to the ambulance with those patients, depending obviously given the disclaimer at the beginning of this podcast, depending on your local medical protocols. This start triage is part of the EMS, um, the NREMT requirements for understanding and learning, one of the learning objectives of the NREMT. So it's important to understand this. I will be linking in the show notes some of the locations where I found the information for this podcast. The references that are linked down below have a ton of awesome graphs and they will further help your understanding. So I recommend taking a look at those. Thanks for listening to this podcast. I hope it helped. Hey everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of BLS Ground Crew. Please like and subscribe to this podcast and feel free to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify Podcasts as well. We're always looking for more ideas to better improve this podcast and more things to talk about. So please feel free to drop a comment below.